Okay, now let's um, look at um, variable declarations and type deductions. So in C++, you can declare the variable almost anywhere. Um, you can declare them at the beginning of the programs, middle of the programs, or at the end of the program. But in old versions of C, programmer must pre-declare all the variables before using it. Uh, but starting from C99, um, C99 is a version of the C programming languages. C also allows programmers to um, declare the variables anywhere in the programs. So uh, let's see the example code for this one as well. Um, particle. So here the variable name is num of students. This is the type of this variable. And this is assignments means 24 is assigned to these uh, variables. And 27 is a literal constants. And you don't need to declare the variable at the top of the program. Um, you can also declare the variable in the middle of the program like this one. And you can also declare the variables, uh, multiple variable like this one. So um, this is uh, exactly SMS. Oops. Let's see. So these two are equivalents. So you can do this way or this way. So the main point I'd like to talk, um, explain in this code is that you can declare your variable in the middle of this program. Okay. So go back to the slide again. And in C++ new type name auto is introduced. And it is introduced starting from C++ 11. So it automatically infers type of the variable, type of the variables based on the expressions on the right side. So if, eva so if we evaluate the expression, um, the value will be returned and the type of auto variable is the type of returned value of the express, this expression, the expressions on the right side. Um, the auto is very useful when we are using iterators in STL, the standard template library. We will learn STL week 14, so don't worry, even you do not understand this code. Uh, just look at this one. As you can see here, the type, the variable IT, the type of variable IT um, is very verbose, long and complex. But uh, we, we can change this variable to auto like this one. So auto is very useful in such, um, such situation, express um, specifying uh, verbose types. It automatically infers this type. So, and the um, auto keyword is also exists in C, um, but um, auto keywords in C is completely different one. Um, in C, auto meaning are local variables, um, but since it is duplicated, um, just don't worry about it, don't use it. Um, just use auto in C++ program. So let's look at a uh, very simple um, example code of auto. Okay, so there is two auto types of variable, x and y, and x we assign um, integer value 10, and y, for variable y, we assign string value. 
So auto will automatically um, infer the types of x as an int. And for y, it will um, deduct type as a string. So we don't need to specify like int x and string y. The auto will do it automatically. And we can print this uh, variable like this one. Let's see if this program works correctly. Okay, so for this one again, um, we also have to specify the uh, programming versions. So um, G++ so okay so if we specify the c plus 11 there's no warning from compiler anymore so if we run it yeah it works correctly as expected it print x as a 10 and y as a string 10. This is a new types, doesn't exist in C. New features in C. So, this is the example we just have a look at it. And decode type also automatically infer type by the existing variables or ex expressions. So if you look at here, the variable x is type double. And if we declared y variable like this one, um, because x is a double and 3.5 is also double, double times double returns double value. So y is also um, becomes uh, double type. So um, like auto, it also um, automatically infers the um, variable types by, um, by the existing variables or the e expressions. So you might wondering when this feature is useful to use. Um, at this point, it is difficult to understand the good use case of decode type um, because we haven't learned a lot of things yet. So, but um, after learning the concept of templates, you will understand more about decode type. So for now, just bear in mind that decode type exists in C++ and it just infer type based on the variables and the expressions. Okay, um, let's take a quick quiz. Um, look at this code and guess um, what happened if we compile this code with C compiler and the C++ compiler. Um, I will give us 30 seconds to think about this. Do you think the result will be same whether we compile with C or C++ compiler? or will it produce different result? So if you look at this code, um, it looks like it is a C program because it, no, it can be C program or C++. It can be both because C++ is a superset of C but stdio.h is a C standard library. So it's including the standard library from C. And it declared the variable flag, which is typo and assign true value to it. And if else returns, um, 
this designs the um, control flow of the program. If you have learned C program before, you can easily understand this, but if you have not learned C programming um, before, it means that if flag is true, execute this line. If flag is false, execute this line. So that is what this um, statements meaning. So because if because flag is true, um, the expected behavior of program is printing true. So let's um, compile this program with C and C++ and C uh, to see whether they result they result the same res they these to the um, same result. So we'll see. So this is the code I just explained to you. So if I compile this full program, open this, compiling this here. So if I compile this program, it gives a compile error. Um, compile error says that undeclared identifier bool on line four. So here, bool, the compile, see, compiler cannot find the bool. This is because bool is um, introduced in C++, not in C. So this is new types in C++. That is the reason why um, C compiler cannot find this type. So um, that's understandable. How about the, um, if we compile? So this is a same code, but with the extension of dot C double C means um, it's C plus plus source code. So let's compile this source code for dot C plus plus. Okay. Um, for with a so if you look at it, this GCC is a C compiler. G++ is a C++ compiler. Uh, using G++ GCC, um, it gives compile error. And using a C++ compiler, it compiles um, successfully without any warning or error. So, and if I run this program, compiled pro C++ program, it gives the um, true as expected. So this flag is true, so it prints true. And um, C++ compiler successfully compiled this program because in C++ there is a type bool is defined. So that was the difference between C and C++. Going back to the slides. Okay, um, now let's um, look at the um, constants and enumerations. So um, let's first look at the um, named constant, constant. So what is the uh, named constants in C++? So as the name suggests, it is about naming constants. Um, Assume that program uses literal constant 24. It's okay. Um, it's okay to use 24. Um, C++ plus compiler will not complain about it. Uh, program will successfully compile even you use um, literal constants the 24. But the problem is that we do not know what 24 means in the program because 24 tells nothing about what it represents. So it makes it difficult for human to understand the logic of the programs. So if we give name to these constants, um, like this one, uh, we now know the meaning of 24. It is a number of students. 
And this is called um, the num underscore symbol students. Um, this is called the uh, named it um, constants or declared constants. So now we can use um, num students instead of literal um, 24. This gives two benefits, um, easy to understand and easy to um, change the program. Um, so let's um, more, let's study more about this using our program source code, the example. Um, I see I have about this example. Okay, so let's look at this example. Um, this program, first of all, I will compile this and run it. So if I run it, so if I run this program, it asks me to enter um, my deposit. So this is from this line. See out, um, print some print this string to the console like this one, and see in receive the input. We will talk about see out see in um, briefly at the end of this lecture. So just. For now, it's printing and it's receiving from input, receiving input from the user. So the cursor is here, it's waiting for my inputs. So for if I enter 100, now it prints this one. And this is from this one. So if, if I enter, I just entered a hundred. The hundred hundred goes to the um, deposit, and there is new three variables: u balance a, b, c, and it um, calculates the uh, balance u balance of a, b, c uh, with these equations. So deposit deposit is hundred because I just entered a hundred, and it times six point nine divided by hundred. So and plus deposit. So it adds 100 to the 6.9. The interest rate is, the rate is 6.9. So that is the reason why my deposit goes to the uh, 106.9 here, because it prints U balance A here. So 6.9 is a rate raised to the um, calculate the uh, new deposit interest rate. So, but um, it's very difficult to understand um, if, if whether this 6.9 is means rate if the program um, grows bigger and become complex. So, so that's um, one difficult, one bad thing about using a literal constant. And the another um, downside of using this literal constant is that if this number changes, for example, if, if we decide to change this number to um, 8.9, uh, we have to change um, everywhere used in used um, everywhere used used about this rate. So we I have to change here as well and here as well. So in this program, um, if I decide to change the rate num number, I have to fix um, three different um, lines of code. And if this code become, if the program um, becomes bigger and big, bigger, um, it's, it's very difficult to change um, program like this way. So, but if, so, so 
to 69. But if we use a named constants, uh, we can solve these two problem. So for example, um, if we declare the name constants called rate and assign to 6.9, and if we change um, 6.9 to rate like this one, name constants. So we'll assume that we change the pro program to this way. So now um, 6.9, we know its meaning is rate by um, because the name of the name constant is rate. So it's much easier to understand the program. And if we decide to change this rate to 8.9 like before, all we need to do is just change this one line. And it will uh, apply to this line, this line, and this line. So that is another strength of using namespace constants. We can, by using a name constants, we can uh, modify or fix or change the program um, much more easily. So before we change three line, lines, but now we only need to change the one line. This is much better. So um, it's completely fine. It's completely fine to um, implement the program like this way. The compiler will not complain about it, but it's just that um, it's more hard to understand. We don't know, we don't know the meaning of 8.9 and um, it's much more difficult to change the program if this value um, affects multiple lines of code. You have to find all the affected lines of code and fix them um, which is uh, not, which is a hard work if programs uh, become bigger. So that is the strength of the name constants. Okay, let's go back to the um, slide. <clears throat> 